You know what's really amazing? A lot of people who are already successful are extremely smart. So what I have realized is that it's not that they do not know. It is not that they do not understand. I was very surprised learning from very successful people that they were still afraid to fail, for example. And so because of that fear, they tended to make decisions just within a specific realm. And anything beyond what they knew for sure they could achieve, they would actually just shy away from it. So that can be around learning, um, uh, around leading teams, that can be around innovating in their industry, that could be around specific amounts of money that beyond that amount that they are used to or that they can fathom, they would literally self-sabotage themselves out of contracts. I've seen that so many times, right? So a lot of the things that we face as we're growing our businesses to the six, seven, multi-seven figures or beyond that, a lot of the things that we faced getting there, we still face at that level. It just looks a little bit different. So for example, I have worked with very successful business leaders for whom building their sales team was a huge block, right? And we know that after a certain point, there's no way that you can do all the things. And so for this specific woman that I was talking to, it took me a little bit of really probing to figure out that the reason why she wasn't getting her sales team together was because of past trauma related to her corporate career where she was leading sales teams and where there was a lot of drama all the time, right? So now her building her own business, she wasn't setting up the foundation of any business, which is literally the sales so that you can have cash in your business. She was still doing everything herself with other teams except a sales team. Now that is not somebody who's not smart. That is somebody who understands and who knows, but there's other things underlying, you know, her reason mm -hmm. for not making this big decision. So it's not that people don't understand. They have patterns. I always say people don't have business problems. They have personal problems. They bring into, into the business that show symptoms in the business. So that's really, there's so many different types of patterns. I could give you so many examples, but at the end of the day, it is typically personal. It is the mindset. It is fears either related to past trauma or what others around us could be thinking. I had, I was having a very eye opening, I guess, um, conversation with the CEO where I couldn't figure out why we couldn't implement the, a specific strategy to really get her past where she was. She was already successful. Turns out the reason why she didn't want to implement it was that it was going to make her more successful, which was going to mean her husband would leave. Now, this is not business strategy, right? This is not systems. This is nothing else, but it's literally other things that come and impact, um, you know, all, all of the things that we just talked about. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because a, a bunch of those pieces that you spoke about, as you've pointed out, are mindset related. So whether it's aspects related to Carol Dweck's work on having yeah. a fixed mindset or a growth mindset, you know, you spoke about components that fit very neatly in that category, but then also those pieces that really are around those narratives or stories that we are not really conscious of, but that are driving that behavior, which really comes back to that central aspect of, you know, if we go all the way back to ancient Greek philosophers talking about the foundational task that we have is to know thyself. Like what is yeah. the aspect of self-awareness and self-knowledge in all of that? And and for me, there's a, an old friend that I have who's a, a public philosopher. He was on the podcast a few weeks back and he has this beautiful saying where he says, all goal setting should be an exercise in ongoing self-knowledge. Like what, yes. how do we connect those things? And I think much of the work that, that you're doing in coaching and working with those business leaders does come back to this component of, okay, we know that we have to set really clear goals and we need to have identified what is success going to look like here? What does that mean for me personally? But you can't do that unless you've actually 
done the self-awareness piece, which is exactly what you're talking about, uncovering what's driving that behavior. Yes. Is there... and be... Oh, yeah, sorry, you go. Oh, I was going to say the self-awareness piece is definitely the most important. That That is why I just even last week I was coaching a, a, a group of multi-million dollar business owners. And what I was focusing on is the importance of having in your calendar time to yourself. It's crazy how busy we get doing all the other things, but the most foundational part of everything that we have to do is gaining clarity. When you have clarity, your team has clarity, your clients has clarity, your audience has clarity. Everything is so much easier and simpler, but we tend to be extremely busy driving towards the next thing without acquiring the learning of the process the internal and you know the personal mastery and everything we have learned and actually processing that and figuring out where we're standing on our own way so if there's one thing that anybody should take out of this uh, episode today at least is making sure that in your calendar you have whether it's on a daily weekly monthly basis that time to sit and reflect and here's the thing again perspective when i look at any masters across all disciplines that I have encountered, whether it is in business or it is in spirituality or in martial arts or other types of sports or anything like that, they all have something in common is that they do a lot of self-reflection. 